Man's Search for Himself by Dr. Rollo May. We're going to discuss this book from the perspectives of desire, allowing the desires to express, the idea that we interpret how to express our desires through what we have learned from the outer world, which may or may not be in alignment with how we truly want to express our desires, which we call the higher self, as well as evolving our consciousness so that we can gain a higher degree of self-awareness so we can actually step out of the equation when we are experiencing certain kinds of emotions that are signs of how we are expressing our desire and to change the meaning around so that we can then affirm the meaning that is in alignment with our true being and then express our desires accordingly to live a life of real love and freedom or creating what we desire in the way we desire. So let's talk about three things that he mentions in the book. Emptiness, loneliness, and anxiety. It may sound surprising when I say, on the basis of my own clinical practice, as well as that of my psychological and psychiatric colleagues, that the chief problem of people in the middle decade of the 20th century is emptiness. And I would say that that would be the case today as well. Emptiness. As Freud made clear, the desire was there. The chief thing necessary was to clear up the repressions, bring the desire into consciousness, and eventually help the patient to become able to gratify his desire in accordance with reality. In other words, realizing that the desire is pure and it is interpreted by programming or information that we have in our subconscious that makes up our identity in which we express it in certain ways that may or may not be in alignment with how we truly desire to express our desires. And through this process of cause and effect reflection, we go into a higher level of understanding of ourselves and are able to create reality the way we want, one with reality, outer world and inner world seeing it as one. In the last video I talked about, and even the video prior, to look at consciousness as the creator of our reality. In other words, our consciousness, our conscious mind and subconscious mind, or whatever categories we want to put into it, labels, creates our reality, our perspectives, and we are the selector of our perspectives, although we might assume that we are identified with our perspectives and our perspectives are absolute, well, Upon deep reflection, we realize that we actually have chosen our perspective, conscious or subconscious, and not just a handful of perspectives, perspectives on everything in life. And our goal is to choose the perspectives, identify the perspectives, realize the implications of our perspectives, and choose the aligned perspectives to express our desires in a way that are in alignment with reality, in other words, spirit of harmony. The experience of emptiness, rather, generally comes from people's feeling that they are powerless to do anything about their lives or the world they live in. Now again, the desire is pure, and we interpret the desire. And sometimes we can interpret the desire by looking at the outer world and saying, powerless. And this is an assumption. However, we don't know it's the assumption until we do this inner work on ourselves and realize that we are actually choosing perspectives, mostly subconscious, to interpret reality and see it from a place of powerless. Another aspect is loneliness. Another characteristic, he says, of modern people is loneliness. They describe this feeling as one of being on the outside, isolated, or if they are sophisticated, they say that they feel alienated. Now, as we continue on this journey of evolving our perspectives on ourselves and understanding ourselves, we'll find that we have unique perspectives that we have identified with that creates reality the way we want to live. And while this might not be shared and common knowledge with those around us, we have to first remember that by living this true way, what is in alignment with who we really are, is going to be 
the primary cause of what we call happiness or experiencing real love. Because happiness and real love are choosing the ways that you want to express your desires. And the alignment of expression of desire is actually in benefit for others, even if there is a form of resistance. Because their resistance may be based on their own interpretation of how they express their desires. In other words, if they believe that desires are expressed in a certain way, and they personally don't feel harmony in the way they express their desires, then they might assume that you also have to feel that way, as in the way that you have to express your desires is the way that they do it. And they might not have that level of understanding to see that the way they express their desires leads to happiness. So then the assumption is that they are suggesting that you live their way. And one of the things we have to remember is we can experience loneliness if we don't understand how this works. And when we reflect that there's probably more people on this journey also at the same level of realization, then there really is a way to connect with them or find them and build relationships with those that are now living their version of the life that they want to live by allowing themselves to be choosing the perspectives that are true to them, consciously and subconsciously, and thus you have a commonality with them. Now you'll notice this when you connect with people that are being authentic and who they really are. You might not necessarily want to do things their way, but you appreciate their authenticity. And as we continue in this journey, we value our own authenticity and we choose to associate with those that have a higher level of authenticity as well. That's because this feeling of alignment is being expressed itself. However, part of the journey is that when we choose this alternative pathway, let's say, to be more who we are, we can experience a degree of loneliness. But this is, remember, part of the journey of evolving ourselves to being in alignment with who we are. Now, the recognition of this is very important because then we understand how it works. And when we don't understand how it works, we might choose an alternative way of looking at it, which would be essentially going back to how we were. And if for some reason we do choose certain perspectives of based on how we were, we'll find ourselves not being happy. So thus, true happiness is found by allowing your desires to express the way that is in alignment with who you really are. Now, if we don't do this, we can experience something called anxiety. So he says, anxiety, the other characteristic of modern man, is even more basic than emptiness and loneliness. For being hollow and lonely would not bother us, so I would say as much, except that it makes us prey to that peculiar psychological pain and turmoil called anxiety. In other words, if you do not allow your desires to express long enough, that repression can lead to anxiety. As stated by Freud, he says, he made it clear that desire was there. So we all have the desire. It's how we interpret the expression of the desire, most of it being subconscious. He says the chief thing necessary was to clear up the repressions bringing the desire into consciousness and eventually helping the patient to become able to gratify his desire in accordance with reality. So in accordance with reality, spirit of harmony. When a person is allowed to understand their true form of expression of desires, they express it in a way that is in spirit of harmony, benefit for themselves, others, divine and of evolution. It is only through misinterpreted perspectives about themselves that their desires are expressed in a way that would say harm another person, harm themselves, or create something that will be not what they desire to create. Or I would say the expression of the desire is through a channel in which they did not know was not in alignment with who they really are. It is the quality of an experience which makes it anxiety rather than the quantity. In its full-blown intensity, anxiety is the most painful emotion to which the human animal is here. 
Present dangers are less than future imaginings, as Shakespeare puts it, and people have been known to leap out of a boat and drown rather than face the greater agony of continual doubt and uncertainty, never knowing whether they will be rescued or not. Now this compounds with time, so the longer we go on the journey of not allowing ourselves to express our desires in the way we choose to express it, which is in alignment with our true self, the more we will find ourselves in loneliness, emptiness, and probably even anxiety. Now, when we find ourselves in anxiety, it's important to remember that there is something that can be done about it. We can connect with others, we can learn information like this to understand the source of this anxiety, which is a misaligned expression of our desire in doing certain things and being in certain circumstances. And I always mention this in relation to the Ikigai. The goal really is to do what you love to do, what you're good at, what the world needs, and we can get paid for, or what you can make a living for, or what you can receive the way you want to receive, fairness. Now, if you don't have this, anxiety is going to build. And if you continue to remain in those circumstances, the anxiety will start to manifest itself as further expressions based on the impression it has on the subconscious mind. He says, this is what anxiety does to a human being. It disorients him, wiping out temporarily his clear knowledge of what and who he is and blurring his view of reality around him. So wiping out temporarily his clear knowledge of what and who he is while blurring his view of reality around him. In other words, reality is interpreted differently based on the perspective of anxiety. Now, when we think about these things, we have to remember that we can work with anxiety or loneliness or emptiness as a emotional sensation to move forward. So he says here, the positive and hopeful side is that just as anxiety destroys our self-awareness, so awareness of ourselves can destroy anxiety. In other words, to release from anxiety, we understand ourselves. And there are some couple key distinctions that we've discussed so far. There is desire, which is pure, and it is to express through you through certain ways of being, which are in alignment with who you are. Self-awareness, then, is understanding where you are allowing it to express, how you are allowing it to express, and how to evolve if you are expressing it in a way that is not in alignment with who you really are. Now, when you go down this journey, then, what you'll find is you'll have less and less anxiety. More and more so each day, you'll release from anxiety because you are being who you really are. In other words, doing what you really love, being who you really love to be, and as a result, you are experiencing more freedom. Our task then is to strengthen our consciousness of ourselves, to find centers of strength within ourselves, which will enable us to stand despite the confusion and bewilderment around us. This is the central purpose of the inquiry in this book. So thus, so far, we have a desire. The desire is pure. How do we want to express the desire? If expressed long enough from a certain perspective or multiple perspectives, it can lead to anxiety. This anxiety can cause us to experience certain circumstance, the outer world, from a place of blur, as he puts it, in a way that affirms that anxiety, but it's, it is actually not how reality is presenting itself. These are interpretations. So we need some tools then. We need some mental models to be able to work with getting ourselves out of the anxiety sensation in the moment and also preemptively and proactively preventing us from experiencing anxiety in the future. So let's talk about strengthening our consciousness of ourselves to contribute. To undertake this venture of becoming aware of ourselves and to discover the sources of our inner strength and security, which are the rewards of such a venture, let's, let us start at the beginning by asking, 
What is this person, this sense of selfhood we seek? In other words, who are we and what are we becoming? Man's consciousness of himself is the source of his highest qualities. It underlies his ability to distinguish between the I and the world. It gives him the capacity to keep time, which is simply the ability to stand outside the present and to imagine oneself back in yesterday or ahead in the day after tomorrow. Thus, human beings can learn from the past and plan for the future. So, the I has the ability to observe the different experiences that we have. I call this cause and effect reflection. The I has the ability to reflect in the moment based on the experience. We can step out of the experience in the moment. We can step away and reflect on our experience and say, how are we expressing the desire? The desire is pure. What are we experiencing in this moment of anxiety? And what is the meaning that we are assigning to this experience? We can even look back on our past through different stages in our life and different experiences in our life and ask ourselves the same question. We have this ability to do it. And the more we practice it, the greater we move into higher levels of consciousness, which we're going to talk about in a moment. This consciousness of self, this capacity to see oneself as though from the outside, is the distinctive characteristic of man. So we have a gift then, a distinctive characteristic. We're able to see ourselves. We're able to review or revise our different experiences that we've had in our past to understand where we were and how we were expressing the desires. What was the meaning? Now, this may be something you would consider working with someone on who has the ability to go through this process with you, but it is something that is infused in all personal development information. The ability to be aware of the experiences that you have, evolve your perspective around the experiences so you can allow your desire to express in a way that is right for you. Spirit of harmony, benefit for you, others, divine, and evolution. This capacity for consciousness of ourselves gives us the ability to see ourselves as others see us and to have empathy with others as well. As Neville puts it in his work, all people represent a mood within us. Reality is us externalized. The outer world is a reflection of the inner world. Everyone is you pushed out. The key is knowing how. On the surface, it might not appear so. This is where cause and effect reflection and being on this journey for an extended period of time and staying committed reveals how so, more so each day. He says it underlies our remarkable capacity to transport ourselves into someone else's parlor where we will be in reality next week and then in imagination to think and plan how we will act. And it enables us to imagine ourselves in someone else's place and to ask how would we feel and what would we do if we were this other person. Now, to help us understand this, let's talk about what he calls the four stages of consciousness of self, the four stages in consciousness of self. The first is that of the innocence of the infant before consciousness of self is born. The second is the stage of rebellion when the person is trying to become free to establish some inner strength in his own right. This stage is most clearly seen in the child of two or three or an adolescent and may involve defiance and hostility. In greater or lesser degree, rebellion is a necessary transition as one cuts old ties and seeks to make new ones. But rebellion is not to be confused with freedom. The third stage we may call the ordinary consciousness of self. In this stage, a person can, to some extent, see his errors, make some allowances for his prejudices, use his guilt feelings and anxiety as experiences to learn from, and make decisions with some responsibility. This is what most people mean when they speak of a healthy state of personality. Now, what we're interested in throughout these discussions is what he calls the fourth stage of consciousness. 
He says, but there is a fourth stage of consciousness, which is extraordinary in the sense that most individuals experience it only rarely. This stage is most clearly illustrated when one gets a sudden insight into a problem abruptly seeming from nowhere pops up an answer for which one has been struggling for in vain for days. Sometimes such insights come as dreams where one has been thinking about something else. In any case, we know that the answer emerges from what we call subconscious levels in the personality. Such consciousness may occur in scientific, religious, or artistic activity like it is something popularly called dawning for ideas or inspiration. As all students of creative activity make clear, this level of consciousness is present in all creative work. Creative consciousness, he calls it. Creative consciousness of self. The classic psychological term for this awareness is ecstasy. The word literally means to stand outside of oneself, that is, to catch a view or experience something from a perspective outside one's usual limited viewpoint. So let's reflect upon this for a moment. To stand outside oneself, that is, to catch a view of or experience something from a perspective outside one's usual limited viewpoint. It is the release from the identity. It is the release from the belief. Release from the idea, the perspective, and say, this is a perspective I'm identifying. This is a belief that I'm identifying with. Whereas before, you thought you were the belief. You thought you were the identity. You thought you were the self-image. But now at this level of consciousness, you realize that that identity is a construct. The belief is a construct. And as mentioned throughout the videos, most beliefs are suggested by the outer world. We receive it from information in the outer world and we assume it to be true to us. We build identities around them. Now, this is very powerful because when we're going back to the earlier points of discussion, we're saying that desire is pure. And the way we express our desires is through the interpretation of ourself, our self-image, our beliefs, our ideas, our values, how we believe reality to work. And if we experience these moments of anxiety, emptiness, and loneliness, really from the fourth level of consciousness, we have to remember that we are actually subconsciously choosing ways of interpreting reality ourselves and reality that is experienced as emptiness, loneliness, or anxiety. That's choice. Now, if this is new to us, this can seem like an impossibility because we have been so identified with these experiences. But at any moment, you can reflect back on your own life and see that you have changed your interpretation of different aspects of reality. You've gone through the journey of evolution of perspective. And as a result, in those scenarios, you did not feel emptiness, you did not feel loneliness, you did not feel anxiety, whereas once you did, as a result of the evolution of self, which may not have been a conscious cause and effect part of the journey process, rather just being and just doing and you're able to change. As I always say this, there's two fundamental ways of creating success, one from a place of force, just showing up every day and just putting in the time and the work and you will change, your perspectives will change, or the other is from a place of flow where you recognize what is being presented to you in the outer world. You are in the arena, so to speak, you're doing every day, but you're also cause and effect reflecting on how to evolve your perspective so that you rise up to higher levels of ability to deal with complexity and experience the inner rewards, let's say the well-being, the sensations that are a result of the neurotransmitters being released while you're in flow. All of these are reward mechanisms that are part of the experience of how you go about doing things. So it's not just what you do, but how you go about doing things that matters if you want to experience more flow. And in order to experience more flow, we want to encourage more cause and effect reflection. And the key takeaway that I'm giving you here and discussed in the book and sharing my perspectives on 
is the understanding that the desire is pure, the success that you want to create is for you, and the way you go about creating it is based on your interpretation of what shows up for you. And if you feel emptiness, anxiety, loneliness, then one of the things we have to do is say, what is our perspective on this experiences that we have and how can we change it? For example, when you realize, let's talk about loneliness, that everything and everyone is consciousness externalized, then you're never alone. You can externalize a conversation in the external world with an interaction with another person, or you could have that same conversation with yourself in your imagination, and you can feel, now this might be a far stretch for many of us, but I can assure you I've done this with myself and gotten myself up to this point, that same level of fullness that you would feel if you are interacting with another person, because the truth is this, the subconscious mind cannot tell the difference. The brain may be able to tell the difference, but the subconscious mind cannot. The subconscious mind does not know the difference between imagination and reality. And the more we give the power to the imagination, the greater the degree and ability we have to work with our imagination to release from these experiences. Now, it's not to say that we have to do this all the time, but it just goes to show you that perspective, changing perspective around different experiences has the ability to release ourselves from how the desire is expressed in those experiences. Or another more, you could say, pragmatic way of looking at it is your interpretation of interaction with the other person. In other words, if they do this to you, let's say they do A as in they don't call you all the time, you feel lonely. Now, again, that is interpretation. You can evolve your perspective to realize that they're probably involved with other things and you're involved with other things. So it's okay and actually in harmony that they're not calling you all the time. And as a result, you feel less loneliness. These are all perspective changes and there's many of them. You can be inspired and find in an infinite array of perspectives by connecting with different people, working with somebody who can help you see new perspectives, or you can create your own perspectives. And what you ideally want to do is find the perspectives that is in alignment with who you truly are. You'll know when you hear them. And this is why I really recommend watching my video on inner voice of discernment. Building a relationship with yourself will not only allow you to have a greater degree of understanding and ability to reflect back on this fourth level of consciousness here, where you can look at whatever had shown up for you and have an inner voice conversation about it, but it will also translate in a greater degree of harmony based relationships with others. And thus you will experience less loneliness and you'll actually have a lot more harmonious relationships. You'll also find that you will have a higher degree of fullness because you're finding happiness in your inner world and you're finding happiness in your outer world through this process. You'll also find that you will have less anxiety. You'll step away from anxiety because you will interpret reality more from more so from the perspective of this anxiety is actually based on a perspective. And what is the perspective? I can choose a different perspective and I can release from this anxiety accordingly. So based on all this and all our discussions, let's go into how you truly want to live, which is truly how you want to express your desires and experience what we call real love or freedom. No one can arrive at real love or morality or freedom until he has frankly confronted and worked through his resentment. Okay, key word here is resentment. If you want one thing that will help you release from loneliness, from anxiety, from any kind of sensations related to emptiness, the key word is resentment. Very powerful. If we have not forgiven ourselves and others in our past, then the desire can express itself through the interpretation or perspectives of resentment. He says, hatred and resentment should be used as motivations to reestablish one's genuine freedom. One will not transform those destructive emotions into constructive ones until he does this. And the first step is to know whom or what one hates. Again, cause and effect reflection. Freedom is man's capacity to take a hand in his own development. 
when we still hold on to resentment, we say that the power is in the past experiences instead of the ongoing journey of becoming who we truly desire to be, which is allowing the desires to express in an authentic way through the perspectives and interpretations that are the way we choose to live. In other words, we call this being more in alignment with our higher self. It is our capacity to mold ourselves. Freedom is the other side of consciousness of self. So a high degree of consciousness of self, cause and effect reflection, the ability to step out of the experiences and see it from a perspective and assign meaning that is in alignment, externalizes as what we would call freedom. If we were to not be able to be aware of ourselves, we would be pushed along by intrinsic or automatic march of history. Now, this entire process, he discusses it through psychotherapy, and he was deeply involved with this. And I've had many conversations and worked with many psychotherapists, psychiatrists, psychologists. And, you know, it's very much a parallel to what I do right now, which is in consulting and actually in leadership when I had my IT business. And so we're really dealing with people's psychology and the same study of what we can do to evolve ourselves will be the same process and modality that we use to help others. So let's look at some of the insights that he gathered from his process. He said, when persons first came to psychotherapeutic help, for example, they generally complain that they are driven in any number of ways. They have sudden anxieties or fears or are blocked in studying or working without any appropriate reason, or so it seems, because they have not brought their subconscious into conscious, which the process helps them do. They are unfree, that is, bound and pushed by unconscious patterns. He says it may be after some months of psychotherapeutic work, little changes begin to appear. So this is a process. Thought is so deeply rooted, as James Allen put in As a Man Thinketh, that we really have to be seeing this as an ongoing journey. And while change can happen in an instant, change can also happen gradually on the journey, and we have to be okay with both. He says the person begins to recall his dreams regularly, or in one session he takes the initiative in starting that he wants to change the subject on hand and get some help on a different problem, or one day he can say that he felt angry when the therapist said such and such, or he is able to cry when previously he never could feel much of anything, or suddenly he laughs with spontaneity and wholeheartedness, or is able to state he doesn't like Mary with whom he has been conventional friends with for years, but does like Carolyn. These are examples that he's giving. In such ways, slight as they have seemed, in such ways, slight as they may seem, his emerging self-awareness goes hand in hand with his enlarging power to direct his own life. So there is a direct correlation between self-awareness and having freedom and real love in your reality. And most of us is subconscious. And when we have the conscious ability and we practice this, the way to get to level four consciousness, as he describes it, is to practice looking at. Neville Goddard talks about revision, revising the scenes. Looking at the different circumstances that happen in a way that you would call undesirable, but it's actually not the undesirable, but the expression of the desire through those circumstances. In other words, I call this the theater of life. And changing the meaning, evolving the meaning around those experiences to be more in alignment and watch the video I did on inner voice of discernment and read the book Power Versus Force to identify and choose perspectives that will move you forward into higher degrees of freedom. If you combine what I'm sharing with you right now, plus put a link in the description, watch the inner voice of discernment video, plus read the book Power Versus Force, you're going to be able to do this work on yourself. And also, if you need to do so, you'll be able to find someone who will also be able to guide you in this journey. Because as mentioned, there may be a need to work with somebody. Usually in cases of deep trauma, it's important to work with somebody. But we can also do this work on ourselves and we have to go at a pace that's right for us. You know the answer. As the person gains more consciousness of self, 
his range of choice and his freedom proportionately increase. Freedom is cumulative. One choice made with an element of freedom makes greater freedom possible for the next choice. This is a journey. As stated, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one footstep. Begins with one footstep. And the footstep really is, in this context here, reflecting upon experiences from the fourth level of consciousness, stepping outside of it. As you continue to develop this, what you'll notice, you'll have a higher degree of ability to do this real time. You'll be able to observe yourself when you're interacting in a conflict or any kind of these examples that he gives anxiety. And in that moment, you'll know that you're identifying with the anxiety and interpreting reality from a certain perspective, which is causing desire to express a certain way. And you'll step away from it in your mind and look at it from a different perspective, choose a different perspective, find a different perspective. And then as a result of doing so, you'll notice that you feel less anxiety. Now for me, certain experiences that I have, which I call undesirable, I have my staples. Number one is immediately realize that I'm dwelling on a thought, release the thought and focus on what I desire to create or something that is in alignment, a thought process of dreams, aspiration, inspiration, and continue to maintain that thought process till that other way of thinking has been excluded out of consciousness. Now, this is not a form of denial. This is more of a form of choosing something as a reassignment of the meaning. In other words, I'm still looking at the five sensory data. I'm just choosing a different meaning on the five sensory data to allow the desire to express in a way that is one of harmony. Another thing that I do is I choose flow. So if I experience any situations that I would call negative emotions and I feel reactive to it, I ask myself, what's going to bring me back into flow? And I pick a task or I pick a project. And my goal is to just do it, start doing it and moving forward in that journey of whatever project or task that I choose. I find myself as Mihai Csikszentmihalyi put in flow, the book flow, becoming autotelic, actions and awareness become one. I find myself being engaged in that process. Now, all of these tools that I'm giving you, and I've got many of them, are a result of my own cause and effect reflection on different experiences that I have, he calls the fourth level of consciousness, in which I was able to step outside of the different experiences that showed up in the entrepreneurial journey, personal life journey, all areas of my life, and evolve my perspective and meaning around it so that I can release from the emotional reaction that will continue to recreate it again and again. So as finally stated here, he says, as the person gains more consciousness of self, his range of choice and his freedom proportionately increase. Freedom is cumulative. One choice made with an element of freedom makes greater freedom possible for the next choice. Each exercise of freedom enlarges the circumference of the circle of oneself. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.